Namaste and welcome, dear friends. Welcome to the Anya Light Healing Channel. My name is Anya Light. This is the first of a three-part series called Transforming Trauma. I am very grateful to share this information with you. I'll just give you a little bit of a backstory on who I am. I am a Reiki and yoga teacher. And for about three decades, I struggled, suffered with complex PTSD. And then slowly over time, through my spiritual practices, I found great healing and great peace in my life. And so my passion now is sharing some of those meditative spiritual practices with people who need it, with trauma survivors, with people who are going through very difficult, challenging, dark struggles. I'm here for you. Today, we're going to be talking about telling stories In the cliched at this point, spiritual communities, we have this idea that telling stories is somehow a bad thing, that the goal in our spirituality is to quiet the mind and that all stories are bad or distracting or a waste of time. However, When we are healing trauma, when we are on the path of healing trauma, it is absolutely vital and 100% necessary to actively and consciously, deliberately use stories as a tool for healing. Simply put, there is no other way to heal the mind when it has been badly damaged other than to tell stories using the mind in order to create the new life for yourself that you want and deserve. So in a sense, we are using the mind to heal the mind. There is really no way around this. And too often, I have noticed, people who get onto the spiritual path And also who are healing through a lot of trauma in their life, they can unfortunately spiritually bypass this stage of the journey. They can hear the message that's so commonly repeated today in books and resources and podcasts that, uh, you know, stop telling all the stories, get out of the stories, drop the stories. And It is helpful advice at certain stages of the journey to hear that advice. However, (laughs) let's make sure that we have an adequate period of time, a gentle, abundant, and non-rushed period of time in our life where we really focus on telling stories, telling, crafting, and creating our own stories that will move us, lift us up out of the darkness and the despair and the anxiety into a new life. And even once we've done that, it's still sometimes good, depending on what's going on in our life, to sometimes create stories to tell, to ground us back into reality. Because the trauma healing journey is a lengthy one and it takes patience. And even myself, I do not consider myself to have PTSD anymore. And also, there are still days that I have where I feel somewhat thrown back into the mental and emotional chaos of the way that I used to feel every day. And when it occasionally comes now, telling stories has been an amazingly effective tool for me. And I have shared this with many survivors I work in a domestic violence shelter, and this is one of the key ways that I share with people how to really get unstuck from trauma, 
So let me dive into it without any further prefacing. So what happens when we get traumatized, and especially for those of you who have endured complex PTSD, so it's not just a single event, but it is a long stretch of repeated situations of violence, assault, feeling unsafe in your home, repeatedly having your innocence violated over a long stretch of time, that, that is a very difficult situation. And when we go through something like that, our mind gets very accustomed to jumping to worry. Our mind gets very skilled <laughs> at worrying a lot and freaking out and overanalyzing everything. You may have heard of the term hypervigilance. We are trained through the trauma that we've endured to be hypervigilant, to always be on guard, to be watching, to be thinking ahead. Is this person going to hurt me? Are these people going to let me down? Um, Are they lying to me? What's going on? And also going back into the past and wondering if we've made a mistake with the choice that we've made. It can be very difficult to make decisions It can be very difficult to just relax and enjoy the present moment of our lives. So because of that, our brain is muddled from trauma. Our brain doesn't function at its optimal capacity. And we have to take that into account in our lives and be real about that and say, you know what, my brain is often frazzled. And I like to refer to that um, situation as trauma brain. When the trauma brain is active, we are paranoid. We are judging ourselves. We dislike ourselves. We get really frustrated at other people. We feel helpless. We feel worried. We feel angry. We feel all these really intense emotions. We feel helpless. And we're not thinking clearly at all. When the trauma brain is activated, we are in fight or flight mode. We are on edge. And so how do we snap ourselves out of that trauma brain? Well, again, it takes patience. It takes time. This is not an overnight process, you know, healing. I can't just wave a magic wand over you. It's going to take some time to reprogram and repattern your brain. So when you are in a situation that is ongoing where you're looking to make a change in your life. For example, let's say that you are in a relationship that is either abusive or it's just not aligned for you. So sometimes we leave relationships because they're outright abusive and, you know, there's been verbal abuse, physical abuse, psychological abuse, and we know, gosh, I, it's time for me to get the heck out of this situation. Or sometimes we choose to leave relationships, and this was equally valid too. We just feel deep in our heart, deep in our bones, that this person really isn't aligned for us in the way that we really truly deserve. There is some fundamental incompatibilities between me and this other person that is causing both of us a lot of stress and bringing us down in some way. Even though there's probably a lot of love there, there's also just this fundamental misalignment. So we choose to leave a relationship. And as we all know, leaving a relationship, an intimate partnership, is very difficult sometimes, especially if we are working through trauma, because the brain is very fearful. The brain, the brain has been set on a program of constant fear. And so where someone who may not have experienced as much trauma in their life, they can more easily leave relationships and start new relationships and so more easily flow from one relationship to the next. For us who are working through trauma, it's not so simple. It's not so simple. So let's say as our example that we are realizing, okay, I'm in a relationship and it's time to end it. It's time to move on. How do I do that? And so we may know that in the future, after we leave the relationship, there's a good chance that we'll miss them and we will want to call them and we will want to reconnect. And not in like a good, healthy friend kind of way, but in a I'm desperate, missing you and freaking out kind of empty way. 
So how do we avoid this? Because it often happens that relationships themselves can become an addictive cycle. We have trouble letting go of people in our lives, or we have trouble making that transition. Um, It's often, I often say that having a period of no contact with the former partner is a good idea before you even attempt to be friends with them because you need time for things to settle into the new routine and you need time to grieve and you can't really do that with the ex-partner still around in your life. So there's a good time for just chilling out, stepping back from the person or maybe you're in a situation where you need to go no contact forever with that person because they've been abusive to you and that's often very helpful for people to do in certain situations. So let's say that you're facing an impending breakup or you've just recently gone through a breakup, but you're finding it really difficult. You're dealing with constant heartache. You're constantly second guessing yourself. Did I make the right decision? Should I go back to them? Oh my gosh, I'm alone. What am I going to do? It's a feeling of just desperation. It's a feeling of anxiety and helplessness. And essentially what has happened is that your core wounds are being brought wide open. They're being torn wide open because trauma effectively teaches us that we are unworthy. And when we're going through the end of a relationship or the transformation of a relationship from one form to another, it opens back up that wound. If we have covered it over, with some coping mechanisms, in this moment of a relationship breaking down, that wound is coming to the surface big time. And it is there in all of its awful glory, and it feels terrible. So what can you do? You can create a short story. Very short. It could be, I, I, I think about it, one sentence is ideal. So you create a story that summarizes the reality of what you know deep in your heart. So an example of this could be, my story could be, we love each other very much, but we are incompatible and drive each other crazy. That could be your story. And... In that story, you're reminding yourself on those cold, dark, dismal days when you're tempted to reach for your phone and text your former partner, you're reminding yourself why you made the difficult decision to leave. So we love each other very much. You include the reality of that because In any relationship, and I don't care how abusive it is, there is always love present. And that's important to know. So at any time you're drawn to someone and you have some kind of a connection with them, it is always from the core and the root of love. And yes, that person or even you yourself, through our own traumas, may not be able to express that love in a healthy way, but that love is real. Even with someone who is extremely narcissistic, there is somewhere in their heart a little tiny nugget of real and pure love. Love is love. So in the story that we've created as an example, we love each other very much. So it acknowledges, yeah, there is and was love there. Yes, true. It's true. And it's okay. And that love is honored and cherished by me, even though it did not continue into the present moment in the relationship form that it was. So the story is, we love each other very much, comma, but we are fundamentally incompatible. Or your story could be, but he beat me. But he called me names. And you can tailor it to whatever your situation is in. We love each other very much, but we argued all the time. And then you can finish your sentence with how it makes you feel. 
So how that difficulty in the relationship made you feel emotionally. So it could be, we love each other very much, but we're fundamentally incompatible and we drove each other crazy. Or I became very sad. Or I became full of rage all the time. So in reminding yourself of how you feel, how you felt as a result of that incompatibility or as a result of that abuse, you remind yourself, you know, if I were to go back into that situation, if I were to go back to that former partner, the same thing would happen all over again. Because often what happens with trauma is that because of our trauma brain, because we're wired to be in a very uneasy and anxious state, we crave sometimes companionship to help us feel safe. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is, that is the way that our human f- being is trying to find peace and harmony. So there's no shame in that. However, if we left a relationship, it's for a good reason. We're not stupid. We had a light bulb go off at some point, a ding, ding, ding moment. We realized we were tuned into our intuition in that moment. You know, I deserve better. You know, a relationship shouldn't be this hard. You know, the way he talked to me, that just ain't right. We had a moment where we were clearly connected to our intuition. We knew it in our heart. We felt it in our bones. This relationship needs to change. I either need to not talk to this person anymore, ever again, because they went so far over my boundary of what's acceptable that they are not allowed in my space anymore in this lifetime, or I'm going to take a few months off from having contact with them. Maybe we can be friends in the future. Maybe not. We'll see how it goes. But for right now, we're not talking because that's the best thing for my healing journey to come back into myself. And so if you, on those dark days where you're tempted to reach out to your ex or you're stalking your ex on social media or you're like toying with the idea in your mind of contacting them or giving them another chance, tell yourself this story. Tell this, repeat this story to yourself in your mind over and over. You can write it down. You can say it out loud. We love each other very much, but we are fundamentally incompatible and we drive each other crazy. And effectively, your brain, your trauma brain, will start to move towards being a healthy brain, a brain that can take in information about the reality of one's life and then make sound, good, healthy decisions based on that. And and this is really what is so devastatingly difficult about healing trauma is that, you know, we're so often unable to make good decisions for ourselves. Because we cannot think clearly. And so again, using a story, intentionally creating a very short story of about one sentence to just repeat to ourselves in those difficult moments when we're second guessing our decision. So let me give you another example is so incredibly helpful. Let's say that our trauma brain is making it difficult for us to walk away from an addiction we have to a substance. So let's say that we struggle with alcohol. And we don't drink in moderation and we use alcohol to numb our emotions and our alcohol habit is leading to all sorts of negative consequences in our life. So we have this aha moment or probably a series of aha moments where we feel really connected to our truth and we think to ourselves, you know, alcohol just doesn't serve me anymore. I really just want to be free of it. I want it, I want it out of my life. Great. So we have this insight probably more than once, until the point comes when we say, okay, I'm letting it go. So we throw our alcohol in the garbage, we make a plan, maybe we start going to a 12-step program, or we read a book about releasing alcohol, or we, we take some sort of steps and we start working towards releasing that from our life and making that a daily habit. I am alcohol free now. And also, there are those days 
that are really difficult and challenging, that are stressful, that are depressing, difficult things happen. And then we start to get this sort of temptation. Ooh, it'd be nice to have a beer right now. Hmm, I could just walk to the corner store and pick up a just a little bottle of wine. It won't matter. It's all right. Just just today, just once. It's no big deal. No one will know. I can handle it. Right? We start to bargain with ourselves. We start to toy with the idea of bringing alcohol back into our life, even though we know, you know, we logically know we had our moment of epiphany, you know, probably multiple over or maybe over many years. You know, we kept having the insight, okay, I want to release alcohol, I want to release alcohol. But then when we actually try to do it, it can be hard. So we create a story and we tell ourselves a story about the reality of the situation. So just like with the first example, we want to include a part of the statement, a part of the story that is that offers us some feeling of peace or comfort about the fact that we're even in this situation in the first place. So with the first example, we included, well, we love each other very much. And so that gives the soul a kind of sigh of relief. Like, yeah, we did. We loved each other. And that's why the situation of leaving is so hard. So what is it about alcohol or whatever substance you're trying to break the habit of doing, whether it is heroin or cigarettes or whatever it might be, what is it about that substance that brings you something positive? So you could say something like, when I'm drinking alcohol, it really relaxes me. But I hate how I feel the next day. Or I hate how I feel in the morning. And you tell yourself this little mini story on those days when it's rough. You just keep telling it, keep saying it like a broken record. Alcohol makes me feel really relaxed when I'm drinking it, but I hate how I feel the next day. It encapsulates the truth of the the situation. Because every situation is not black and white. It's not like alcohol is 100% has been 100% negative for you. It's not like that past relationship has been 100% negative. There's always good reasons for getting into things. There's always emotional pluses that draw us into a situation, even if it seems so toxic. There's always some blessing that led us into it, whether you know it's for learning purposes or at the time when we engaged in these activities, it was soothing to us in some way or relaxing or we burnt off some steam or it brought us some kind of joy in the moment, right? And also, what are the side effects of that? So creating a story about your addiction, about your addiction cycle that encapsulates both a a little statement about why it, it did serve you for a while. Yeah, alcohol brought me relaxation, which was good, right? I needed that at the end of a long day, perhaps doing a job that I hate, you know, I needed a few hours at the end of the night to wind down with a whiskey because I just wanted to forget the day. That was beneficial for a while. It worked for a while. That was a strategy, a coping method that did bring me some amount of peace. And then in your story, include the rest of the reality of the situation. But the next day I felt like crap. Or, but if I start drinking, I can't stop. And then I lose my family. Or if I keep drinking... I'll get into a car accident again or something like that. So what is the part of the addiction that is asking you to leave it behind? What is the hard, cold reality of the situation? So we can look at addictions in a way that allows us to feel grateful to that person or that substance or whatever it may be for the temporary time that it did bring us something positive. And then we can also remind ourselves of the reality so we can let go. And again, using these stories, these intentionally created stories 
helps to heal that trauma brain. So the brain becomes more lucid, more able to stand firm and stay strong and centered in the new reality that we are co-creating with the universe. And one of the things that I always tell the trauma survivors that I'm working with is you are the strongest people in the entire world. And I fully mean that. Have you ever met someone who seems to have everything going their way in life? Like they probably had an awesome education when they were a kid. Their parents were super rich and they sent them to the best schools. And then, and then, you know, they were like prom king in high school. And then, (laughs) and then they went off and found a beautiful spouse and had beautiful children and then got a beautiful house and have a beautiful career and all the things. And, um, they have this story of like perfection, you know, and, but also, you sit down with that person for a cup of coffee and you have a conversation with them and there's something lacking in the conversation. It's like there's a depth that they that person just can't go to because they have not experienced suffering, which not has, because they have not experienced suffering, their heart, and this is paradoxical because you would think that someone like that would have such an amazing energy and radiate positivity. But often the case, what I find, those people are actually the most numb to the spiritual life. They have not had their heart cracked wide open. And they have not had to pick themselves out of the ditch of hell. Because life has been handed to them in many ways on a silver spoon. So they don't know... They don't know the true meaning of inner strength. And they don't know what it feels like to fall to their knees, weeping... Wanting to die because life just hurts too much. Because when we experience falling to our knees, weeping, praying to God, why are, why is this happening? Why, God? And having those profoundly dark night of the soul kind of moments, it is then that we emerge back up. And as the great late singer-songwriter Leonard Cohen says, There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. The people who have undergone the abuse, the neglect, the rape, the violence, the oppression, that have dealt with gunshots in their childhood neighborhood, that have dealt with feeling unsafe in their childhood home, the people that fled their country because of war, the people that have gone through famine, those people, they have the great opportunity to become wise. And not everyone, not everyone, unfortunately, rises to that occasion. But there are some that do. You can either become bitter because of trauma or you can choose life you can choose joy you can choose peace but in order to get there we have to go through this healing process and so the tool of telling stories is incredibly useful so dear friends if you are healing trauma and you are struggling with something in your life making a decision letting go of something bringing in a new healthy habit Create a one-sentence story. I invite you to just create this one-sentence story. Write it down on post-it notes and put it throughout your house. Tell the story of that situation, the reality of it. What was the benefit? What did it what what solace did that old way? old pattern, old way of thinking or behaving bring you for a time in the past? And then what, but what sucks about it? Why do you realize, no, I don't want that anymore? And in the story, you can even create a part of the story where you envision what you do want. So to add to the the first example I gave, We love each other very much, but we are fundamentally incompatible and we drive each other crazy. 
<laughs> semicolon, because this will be a long sentence, <laughs> semicolon, and I am actively becoming my own best friend so that I can manifest a partner of amazing quality in the future. Or for the example of the alcohol story, alcohol used to make me feel relaxed at the end of a hard day, but I don't like how it makes me feel the next day. And so I am actively practicing yoga every day to relax me, both body and mind. So we, in the story, talk about the new thing we're pursuing, the new path, the new way, the new technique that will bring us those same benefits or the vision of the future that we're, we're in the process of creating. You know, I'm, I'm in the process of manifesting a partner that truly, truly brings me lasting peace and joy and not just occasionally and not just between fights, but all the time and every day. So, dear friends, I hope this has helped. I hope that you think of the word story in a positive light. And again, if you hear spiritual teachings talk about, you know, get rid of the story, drop the story. Yeah, you know, spiritual teachings uh, cater to many, many different stages of the journey. And my invitation to you is to get real with yourself and ask yourself, You know, am I in the phase of it's really necessary for me to tell myself some stories so I can heal my trauma brain, get my brain functioning clearly with self-love and awareness of my highest good? And, And do I need to tell myself some stories to thrust myself into the future that I know in my heart I deserve? Thank you for joining me in this first part of Transforming Trauma. I'm Anya Light. I appreciate all the support from this community. Please check down below if you'd like to offer your support so I can continue making beautiful videos for everyone. You can join my Patreon community, online community, and I'll send you personalized poetry and all kinds of fun things. (laughs) All right. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Blessings to you.